Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Poetry forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Yvonne Blomer. You may have seen me already once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> ah, what are we here for? We are here for our in 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 our amazing closing reading. Our readers, I, inspired by Susan Musgrave and Lorna Crozier, I have assigned an abstract noun to each of our readers this afternoon. <laughs> In order, we have Paul Nelson, Mr. Exuberance. Paul! <laughs> <laughs> because of his laugh. Did you laugh? There it is. <laughs> Jay Rozeski, where are you, Jay? Mr. Generosity. <laughs> Sam Hamill, our man of wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. Sam. Rita Wong, our woman of healing and protection. Yeah. And Robert Ringhurst, our man of knowledge. Yeah. Um, I feel I should probably say a few words because this is the last event, but I have a few homework assignments first. So first of all, um, the Cascadia Poetry Festival thanks this Nunaimo, whose traditional territory we are gathered. We also thank Vancouver Island University, not for their stairs, no, but for the wonderful location. Thank you to the, for the support of the VIU Faculty of the Arts and Humanities for their generous donation of financial assistance. Without money, these things don't happen. So thank you, VIU. Thank you also the Nanaimo Tourism Development Fund, the Canada Council for the Arts, the League of Canadian Poets, which always sounds like superheroes to me, the, Un the Writers Union of Canada, and Cascadia Now for their funding also. Also the many sponsors that are in your program. Go shop or borrow their bathroom. <laughs> Washrooms are at the top of the stairs and cell phones please off. I have heard cell phones ringing during these no. events, so please yeah, take care of that now. Uh, I'll, I'll maybe just take care of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Set a good example. I'll take care of mine in a minute. It never rings. Um, in your package, you will have each received the Cascadia Poetry Festival, Festival Evaluation Form. So please fill that in. It's very important for us to know what worked and didn't work for programming for the next festival. It's in the envelope, along with the bioregional quiz, but I checked and there's no prize. <laughs> Just pride in knowing what you know. Okay, I think that covered everything. Um, at the end of the reading, we need some strong bodies to help move boxes of books and tables out of the book seller's room. So if anybody is able to help out with that, that would be wonderful. Probably you should talk to Kim Goldberg at the end. Okay, sure. Yeah. And uh, there will be a gathering at the Globe also, if you're up for a drink at the end. And that is my... That's it. So... It feels that we are a tribe. We have come together across borders, to cross boundaries and thresholds, to hold poetry and the bioregion safe, protected. We know the land and we are learning the land. Um, we are building community. We are relearning that we are part of the environment and the natural world. And I think this festival has been amazing for all of those things. So thank you to all the participants. We're going to start with the founder of the festival, Paul Nelson. Paul Nelson founded SPLAB, the Seattle, Seattle Poetics Lab, and he also envisioned the Cascadia Poetry Festival and made it happen. He is the author of Organic Poetry Essays, a serial poem reenacting history. A Time Before Slaughter, shortlisted for a 2010 Genius Award by The Stranger, and Organic in Cascadia, a sequence of energies. He has interviewed Allen Ginsberg, Michael McClure, Sam Hamill, Robin Blazer, 
Nate Mackey, Joanne Kiger, Brenda Hillman, and others. He has presented poetry poetics in London, Brussels, Nanaimo, Qinghai, and Beijing, China, has had work translated into Spanish, Chinese, and Portuguese, and writes the American sentence every day. Please welcome Paul Nelson. Glad I, have, I get to go first because I don't want to go after the folks that are reading. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in awe of the readers who follow, and I'm very grateful to be in their company. Um, I'm also in awe of the organizing abilities of this Nanaimo local organizing team. When they left Seattle, when they left Seattle last year, they said, "You set the bar very, very high," and they have exceeded it without the poll to go over it. So. Congratulations. My father died a year ago, May 11th, and uh, I'd like to dedicate my portion of the reading to him, Paul Everett Nelson Sr., and uh, a song, part of a song that we attempted to sing at his grave about a year ago, it was one of his favorite songs, one I remember him singing when we were kids, you might know it. Mr. Mr. Johnny Rebecca, how could you be so mean? We told you you'd be sorry for inventing that machine. Now all the neighbors, cats and dogs, will never more be seen. They've all been ground the sausages and Johnny Rebecca's machine. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the only part of it. Google it. <laughs> my dad, my, my aunt said that my dad changed after his older brothers died of diphtheria within five weeks of each other because his mom didn't want to take him to charity care in the hospital. So this is nine sonnets for Pop. Pop's in the hospital, a slight stroke we figure, but in allopathic terms, expressive aphasia. Speech difficult to initiate, non-fluent, labored, and halting. Deficient intonation, stress patterns, and language reduced to disjointed words and poor sentence construction. <laughs> Sounds like poetry, you think? While well, Josefina arrives from Yakima, trunk full of handmade corn tortillas, the heat more than a large can of salsa can take with a two-hour ride over the pass. Two, Resurrection Hospital where the Sox could not sweep the Cubs today, adding insult to a speech-addled father we've always known as fluent. In his condemnation of all things, like Republicans, FDR gave me Social Security and LBJ Medicare, but these assholes, then you try to change the subject back to baseball. He was even guarded last year when the Sox won it all, saying, that probably get swept in California when they did the sweeping. That picture is still my screensaver. Three, no, you think their lab experiment is your father, and you know the drill, drugs, surgery, or radiation. They're not going to use radiation, Ma says, and don't lecture, and Linda says, he'll only listen to you, and you can only say, I've known him longer. But to see him break down and cry, we're all going to die, and death is no failure, but who dies on their own terms without the Kevorkian treatment? Thank you, but no, Jack, I can't hear a click. Four. There are kids in the lot cooling off from July in the early global warming era. Someone has to rescue the frog. But in Darfur, death, plants and animals are migrating toward the poles as we set this old spaceship on fire. Meantime, tortillas, a dip in the stuck, tender feet don't like the feel of rocks, and pop breaks down when the tongue won't cooperate with the brain. Such perception. The Chinese will take us over without firing a shot. Five, nations are permanent, as July. You want to tell him, but remain silent that he gets it, and no one has to break it down for him. But the breakdown of the arteries and the brain parts that depend on them means the breakdown of, not our patriarch, but Pop nonetheless, crying at the hospital, and some part of that emotionally blocked bloodline bubbles up into consciousness, and yet you'll end up being the last. Too smart for I told you so, contending with your own fire. Six, too much fire in the liver. 
the heart, the blood, fire, and that old coat, fire never replenished, as in the way of the old ones, fire coming back to bite its master, fire never studied, allowed to lick where it chooses, all the lack of gratitude, fanning that ancient blue flame gone awry as if you knew how the Creator intended it. Pop, you don't have no language for it. It must settle for a language older than words, and now all we can do is count tears. Seven, take a stubborn motherfucker and hope for grace. Stain the prayer rug or ply your spiritual habits down by the river, and maybe the water bodhisattva has an answer, and maybe it's in a tongue you can negotiate, or maybe you just get a gist, or a gust of wind liberates you from your spit, and you learn how to take agony and be a shopkeeper about it, selling enough to keep yourself in bread, bananas, and beer. Eight. All his lessons seem to come up now, the ones about what you can get away with and that you should show up on time to work, the lesson of rising early and joining the union and paying your dues long into retirement, what Lech called Solidarność, how a red flag rises out of blood, but when the blood is undone by fire or begins to lose its way and that eloquent man reduced to incoherence. Nine, you want to think about his stain, how he had the sense to bring more fire to a bloodline and more important, heart. When his brothers died, when he was not yet ten, he did what he had to do to survive. And you got that, survival, like a lifetime of clenched teeth and a way out of wilderness via helicopters over the canyon, and a tuning of fix that fire into a mode where somehow there's a gracias in all of your grief. So a few American senses, if I get my password right. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to print these out before I came here. American senses are a form that Allen Ginsberg sort of invented to Americanize haiku. I've been writing one a day since 2001. So here's a few, and I picked these out because they have some kind of Cascadia connection, or at least I thought I did when I was compiling them. April 19th, 02, Canada's flag, half mass, past the Peace Arch from our friendly fire. Mm -hmm. August 21st, 05, Seattle license plate holder, yard work is for people who don't kayak. <laughs> May 20th, 2006, Carolyn says, I don't know what to say, and then she keeps on talking. <laughs> December 19th, 07, his t-shirt said, vegetarian is Indian for bad hunter. <laughs> September 3rd, 08, what I thought was Sam's Zen golf concentration was his hearing aid turned off. <laughs> December 15th, 2010, how many fucking days does it have to rain before my car gets clean? <laughs> July 8th, 2011, Stellar J, what, 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 September 5th, 2011, at the home of Buster, the three-legged cat, they offer gluten-free beer. <laughs> October 20th, 2011, Seattle Day, Wondering if the solar-powered prayer wheel will turn. <laughs> November 1st, 2011. She's not a witch in a wheelchair. She's a disabled pagan. <laughs> January 4th, 2012. Northwest Church Memorial Service gluten-free communion wafers. <laughs> May 20th, 2012. Translating deviled eggs into Spanish harder than huevos de lucifer. <laughs> Anytime I speak Spanish, it's an homage to my mom, so I'm not leaving her out of this because she is a native Spanish speaker. January 20th, 2013, only a white person would try to strangle someone with their dreadlocks. <laughs> July 3rd, 2013, the potted plants outside the medical marijuana shop are dead. <laughs> October 29th, 2014, when someone in Seattle writes you saying, peace out, they mean, fuck you. <clears throat> Nadine, this is for you, November 5th last year, what I love about being woman, multiple orgasms, and my hair. <laughs> and April 2nd, 
from this year. Kale's not food, says Sam, who for breakfast has pastry, coffee, and a smoke. <laughs> And uh, this is from the, the work that I just completed, Pig War and Other Songs of Cascadia. So going into the boundary dispute where the U.S. had a chance to have war, and it didn't happen <laughs> the only time in history. Why? Because it was in Cascadia, I think. I don't know exactly why other than that. So I'm going to read this and I'll get off, get off the stage with uh, gratitude for the great listening and for the great company I have, everybody and your contribution to this, and I hope that this continues uh, in the best way in the future. So during my, doing my research on the pig war, I read about this guy, Juan Vicente, and I, I, I kind of didn't want to like him, but the more I read about him, the more I liked him. I think this poem points that out. So, Juan Vicente de Juemes, Padilla Orcasitas y Aguayo, second count of Ravia Higuedo. Y who is the San Juan after whom the Islas de San Juan are named, and how did Spaniards get here? And who, why, how? Did the blood stop at one pig? How were the war pigs for once denied, denuded, divested of covering, made bare? Could have been war glorious here in Isla y Archipelago de San Juan. Cannonballs and musket blasts to scatter the last of the Canis lupus, the Columbia black-tailed deer, the rare northern sea otter for whom or whose pelt quimper would trade copper years before filthy Jerry could get his fingers on it. But there's something in the Cascadia water would bring out the noble in men, like Admiral Baines, who'd soon be knighted, who'd refuse Governor Douglas' August 2, 1859 troop landing order. Something that'd attract Spaniards, like the Mexican Viceroy Juan Vicente de Juanes Padilla Orcasitas y Aguayo, second count of Revilla Higuero. Not the San Juan who would be put in a cell not much bigger than himself, not the one who'd see the union of Jiwa and divine in the metaphor of holy marriage, not the one who'd write about how the bride hides herself and abandoned him in his lonely groaning, not the one who'd feel the need to purge every last imperfection, every last psychic typo, every last lust urge, every last of the dominator fixation, not mitigated but transcended by the fire to which Blazer would allude, not the he of a thousand graces diffusing, graces unnumbered, those that protect from the thousand cuts that come from conceptions of the beloved. Not the one whose metaphor bride would leave his heart there in that lashed meat cage maintained by a bit, a bit of bread and salted fish. Not the one with a silvered surface who'd one day mirror forth. Not the one on the wing whose beloved would one day see the strange islands with the roaring torrents, Cascade Falls, and whose gales would whisper a more. A love awakening south wind not spewed by spetsics who'd be the rain wind from the southwest, a two-day canoe journey south of the present scene. Not the one whose beloved bride from a mother corrupted would make a bed out of flowers, protected by lions, hung with purple, and crowned with a thousand shields of gold. Not the one whose bride would attract young ones, and who'd commence the flow of divine balsam, and get him pitch drunk on fire, and scent, and spiced wine. Not he of all consuming painless fire drunk on pomegranate wine, whose only job was a moor. Not that San Juan. This one was a Cubano, born in La Habana, the third Criago Viceroy of Hispania Nueva. This one would see the capital, then Veracruz, as a slum, peasants in thin robes, straw hats, trash in the streets in the first flash of all those res dogs to come. This one, El Vengador de la Justicia, he'd find and hang the outlaw gangs of murderers and clean the Viceroy's palace. Light the streets of Ciudad de Mexico, pave highways to Veracruz, Acapulco, Guadalajara, San Blas, y Toluca. Find the Aztec calendar stone and set the heavens on fire. But found Cascadia not worth the troops it had cost to own her, settled for leading the flock of 4.5 million future Mexicans. He'd count and a few islands to this day, in one way or another, bear his name, San Juan. Orcas, Wemis, dots in a green landscape as seen from Constitution, 
where the divine balsam flows by the kayaks and the wind whispers. <laughs>